Hi everyone, this is going to be a multi-part video in which I'm going to take you through a complete project of morphing and texturing a character's head. Uh, we're going to do this based on photo references and we're going to first morph it into shape so then it, we can use the textures to transfer onto the model with doing as minimal adjustments as possible uh, given the conformity of the shape. And um, I'm doing th a few things differently in this video than I've done in the past. Uh, the first thing is that I have recorded this before beforehand and now I'm going to commentate over top of it and so in this way I can uh, I, doing the project I can just focus on the techniques and afterwards we can do a little post analysis I can comment on uh, what I was doing at the time so okay let's get started with it first off we are going to be um, starting off with the Second Life avatar which but this technique is completely generic it can be used for just about uh, any character model you might have and so here I'm just going to zoom in onto the head and there's a little bit of a lag here because you can't the capture program doesn't show the fact that I'm uh, I'm browsing for files to drop into so at this point I just dragged and dropped a uh, photo reference into the viewport so I just dragged it from the uh, the Windows file um, finder and then dragged it into the viewport and it showed up and now I'm using those uh, these are um, transforms here and what these do is they allow you to move rotate and scale the entire reference object without actually morphing it so it's just kind of a global transformation and you don't have to worry about selecting you just click on it and go and the whole thing gets affected so that's how it's different from using a, a, a morphed um, tool Okay, and so what I just did here is I dragged and dropped that same photo into the brush image. Now this uh, is a really powerful technique. So what I'm doing is I'm using this to overlay on, um, the image on the model. And if you see here, it says brush, brush tile view and it says hotkey V. So once I have loaded um, a texture into here, I just hit the V key and I enter the special viewport mode. And, and, and by pushing shift V, I got to that tile um, setup, which let's just go back there for a second, right here. This is the brush tile setup and you can use shift V or if you click on the texture, uh, as we, I'll show you later when it shows up in the video, there's a setup button if you want to do it manually, but shift V is the easiest way of doing it. And then here we're setting up a fixed plane and we're going to stretch it and we're kind of try to get it to conform to the head as much as possible in its current shape. Um, so let us go back to the playing here. Okay, so what I do is I click on move here. So this means when I uh, click in the viewport, I'm going to be moving this fixed plane. Um, so anyway, I'm zooming in a little closer. And what are we going to do here now? <laughs> ah, okay, going back to the setup. Now again, I'm, I'm uh, continuing to tweak. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm using the eyes as anchors here because this shape is of the head as it is is not going to perfectly f fit this photograph. So I want to pick a sort of a starting anchor point. I'm going to morph everything to fit. So uh, that's what I'm doing is I'm using the eyes as my sort of anchor point here. And now I just selected this is the, um, the selection brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on symmetry in this so that way whatever happens on this side of the model is also going to happen on this side of the model. If you want to make your model asymmetric, you might want to do that after you get the general shape set up. So here I am. Okay, I'm uh, selecting uh, all the vertices on this side. Uh, this is probably not the most efficient way. If you want to get the whole head, you might want to use this the rectangular box and set your hardness to 100% if you want to do this. Uh, but anyway. And so um, I push the shift space hotkey here, and this makes that uh, this hot selection permanent, permanently viewed. So it's not just flashing as you make the selection and disappearing as you go away. It's <coughs> making it persistent. So this is when you want to do uh, a more complex selection. You need to, you know, keep it visible. You, you hit that hotkey. Now I go. Uh, I push the, the V hotkey again here, and now what I'm doing is I use the, uh, this is the scale deformer, and I made it only in the horizontal direction. Let's go back to where I did that. Uh, see here's the direction horizontal vertical, so when you, uh, right now it's the selection brush, but we have the same options for the scale, which is coming up. There we go. It's only horizontal, so that means the scaling is only going to happen in the horizontal direction. So the depth won't be affected and the height won't be affected. Quite obvious. Okay, and so as you can see here, I also had to select the default morph because we have to be affecting something. And so I'm just kind of squishing the head there to get it to the general shape. And, and we also notice the ears have a different placement. So I'm going to sort of take that whole region of the head 
and I'm going to be uh, screwing that out. And see what happened just here is I hit the S key a few times. Let's go back. Uh, I hit the S key a few times after making the selection, and that softens it because this is a low polygon model, and you just got mostly yellow and a little bit of red at the edge because there isn't uh, too many points in between. But by hitting that S key, I get a, more, a softer gradient. So when I do the deformation, it'll be it'll be a more organic. Uh, uh, transformation, it won't be as harsh. You won't get some uh, uh, bunched up polygons. Uh, okay. Now I'm going back to the, uh, the brush tile view and the setup tool. And now I'm going to just tweak it a little more. So you basically get the idea here. When I have this fixed plane, I can use the move to shift it around, the size to stretch it in the horizontal vertical direction. Uh, in this particular case, since we're going um, straight from the front, we don't have to worry about rotating it because, uh, well, we just don't. So um, again, I'm just doing some further tweaking here. So essentially, you see what I'm doing is I'm trying to get those ears to roughly the same position. And in this particular, you know, we're not going for perfection here because it just, number one, won't be possible. But, um, and number two, we might not even want this final shape in the end. But we're just getting this shape to match up the photos as much as possible. So when we go to transfer those textures, when we when we paint on, we'll have to do as little sort of uh, stitching together as possible. Like things will just line up mostly, and we'll be able to drop in the front view and paint, and then drop in the side view and paint, and it'll be relatively painless. So this is an important step. And again, you don't have to do, do this. You can start off without morphing at all, and you could uh, just simply uh, just paint pat each patch at a time. You can do a little bit of the cheek and then move the texture over and then do a little bit of the nose. But uh, you might want to morph in any case, so uh, that's why we're doing this. And just as a little side note here, oh, I'm also, just before I get to that, I'm adjusting the lips here. So what I did is I selected the whole lip region, and um, because in the photo uh, reference, their mouth is more closed in there, I'm going to be selecting that lower lip. Bit. Let's make a pause here. Right here, the upper teeth and lower teeth. I've already set up display groups for these. I'll just pause just to comment on these for a bit. Um, this video doesn't show you actually how to set them up. I'll do that in another video. But essentially, what I did is uh, beforehand, as I so there's these regions of these polygons which are supposed to be teeth in which you, you, you can paint uh, teeth textures onto them. Uh, and uh, so and they're, they're separate from the rest of the head. So I selected those beforehand and then I right clicked over here and said, and I created a new group and I call them upper teeth and lower teeth. And the, the reason why you wanna do this is that because those are internal geometry, a lot of times you morph in the head shape and you could accidentally sort of just grab a few polygons in the teeth and you can bend them out of shape. So when I, when I click on this, the eye icon here, it turns into a lock the first time. And if I click on it again, it'll hide. So it'll turn into an eye with a line through it. So these are really handy to keep things organized, to, to keep those uh, different uh, sort of body parts, uh, uh, you know, separate from each other. So let us continue and knowing that.